Hello, welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 106. You can find me everywhere as Kralaline, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry. That works. Yes, I'm still on Ravelry. Not as active as I used to be. Here is Binks. <laughs> I have a web shop, colorfulcreativity.nl. And well, all the links to everything and the show notes you can find down here on YouTube in the description box below here. So, welcome everyone. Welcome to all new viewers. I hope you like it here. Click subscribe down below and become a returning viewer. And of course, welcome back to all returning viewers. I am super happy that you like it here. You stick around, you message me and um, send me lovely comments on the last episode that you really missed me and you're happy to see me again. Well, I can say I'm happy to be back. <laughs> A bit more regularity, bit more schedule and everything, which is nice. Bings, you're fluffy. You make my nose itch. Come here, you. Show yourself. Oh, he's purring so loudly. It's a shame the camera won't pick it up. And I forgot to put on the microphone. I will fix that. Right, let's start right away with finished objects. I am wearing my brush of color tank, uh, which is a pattern by Tina Tse from Tina Tse Knits. And uh, yeah, I recorded a, a little clip with a happy dance, so you can see that now. top is uh, done with intarsia. It's knit from the bottom up and um, I added about one inch extra in the ribbing which now in hindsight was totally unnecessary but okay it's long enough <laughs> definitely. Um, I really like the intarsia how it's done in the front with um, the eyelets um, you saw them in the clip. On the back it's the normal intarsia transition and I ran out of yarn. Whoops. Yeah. Um, so I had to adjust the back and I used the, um, the the contrasting colors for it that I used in the intarsia panel and I decided to make the stripes just as big as the intarsia panel and I love how that worked out. I got a lot of com compliments on it, so apparently you all love how it turned out. Bings, do not eat the microphone. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it's just a very comfortable and um, if you are unfamiliar with intarsia, then uh, this is kind of a great beginner's uh, knit for it. I have done intarsia before and I love intarsia. So this uh, top basically flew off the needles. Um, I knit it in Drops Muscat, which is a 100% uh, cotton. It is uh, super affordable. For me it was deep stash and not even my own deep stash because I got it from a friend um, who um, was helping her mother clear out her house. Um, she moved from a big house to a smaller house, so she had to do a lot of decluttering. And uh, well, um, she asked me if I would want the drops mascot yarn, and I was like, yeah, sure. I'm I'm crocheting a baby blanket with it. Well, that baby blanket never not finished. Um, because that baby is still not here. Um, so yeah, I was like, I can just leave it and wait longer or I can just use that lot that I got. And uh, yeah, 
Uh, here is a wonderful top now, knit out of eight balls, which depending on if there's a drop sale going, I think last month there was a cotton sale. Um, it would have been 10 euros and um, without the sale it's about 20 euros. So very affordable, which I love. Um, I do not just knit with indie dyed yarn. Um, though I have to say my own yarn of course is uh, to me a lot cheaper than buying all the big name brands. Um, it's one of the reasons I started dyeing because I couldn't afford big name brands. Um, so yeah, um, it's an amazing knit. I have seen it in hand dyed cotton, which is totally new to me. Um, they look wonderful, but yeah, I was like, I have drops miscut for the ready and getting yarn from the US at the moment is a big pain in the ass. So that would have meant that I would have gotten the yarn way past the test knit deadline. So it's like, yeah, never mind, <laughs> not even gonna bother. Um, but I have a really nice top now. And uh, yeah, very happy with that. My second finished object is this one. This is the Biscotti Crop uh, by Swanky Emu Knits. And I am not 100% sure if I have not shown it to you, but I think I haven't. Um, so I have some photos from the photo shoot. I am wearing it with my dungarees and also with, I think, my skirt or my shorts. I'm not even sure anymore. It was quite a while ago. This crop top has a wonderful texture, as you can see. And for the back, we have these crossed straps. And this is going into a point. You can see my bra when I wear it, but I actually don't really mind. Um, there are also days I don't wear a bra, but then it also looks different. <laughs> I um, knit this out of Scheepjes Katona. Um, the yarn was left over from a sweater by my mother-in-law. And uh, I think I used about five or six balls, which is about 10 to 12 euros. Um, yeah, super cheap again, but very nice knit. Um, she does recommend to use a blend, so something cotton with something else to have it a bit more stretchy which I totally understand because this uh, side especially under the armholes is really tight there's no stretch in this at all in in this bind off uh, border um, but yeah I love it anyways I will wear this when it's really really hot and it's like that this week actually, so I'll be happy I washed and blocked it last weekend. And uh, yeah, those are my finished objects. You hear me talk about um, prizes now for my knitted finished objects. You can also find all the info on my Instagram. Um, I have a highlight for my test knits for the fat test knits. I do fat because, well, um, well, actually I shouldn't do fat because I am fat, um, but yeah, um, <laughs> see, even for me, accepting myself as being fat, it's still difficult to say it out loud, uh, because of what will everyone think and uh, what will everyone say, uh, yeah, well, it is what it is, um, it is in the fat test knit highlight, and, um, also, I have decided to put it in the finished object post on the feed because, well, with Ravelry not exactly doing <laughs> what we wanted to, 
and not being accessible for lots and lots of people I thought the info should be in a different place as well and um, also the accessibility for yarn and uh, different uh, prizes I think it's very important not everything has to be knit out of indie dyed yarn and uh, I also want to show that I can't afford $500 for a cardigan that I still have to knit myself I mean not even a store-bought cardigan of $500 I could afford um, I wouldn't even buy that I was like I could buy a whole wardrobe for that my goodness um, so yeah, I uh, thought it was important to also have that, um, the affordability and accessibility of other options. There has been loads of discussion and information about that on Instagram, so I'm not gonna go into it a lot. If you do want me to, just drop me a comment and I'll see what I can do for the next episode. Then it's time for whips. I have a lot. I should have said up front, brace yourself. Oh, I see a finished object. Actually, it's a half finished object. I was knitting this sock last time. This is the Brighten Up Your Day colorway. And yeah, this is on my sock base. And I am knitting this on a 2.25 millimeter needle, or I was knitting it. Which means this sock is kind of bulletproof. I should have gone with a 2.5 millimeter, just like I usually do. And since I was going down a needle size, I added a few stitches, but I didn't add enough. So, even though I really like how it looks, it feels like sanding paper. <laughs> because it's just way too tightly knit. There's definitely no, yeah, no softness or anything in there. Um, so I decided just to add it to make it a sample sock so you all can see how that colorway knits up. So this is it. Brighten up your day on colorful sock. Available again in the shop. Of course I have dyed this um, last week or the week before. Uh, in loads, so um, there's plenty in the shop if all's good <laughs> um, That one is not gonna get a second sock So then to the real whips in my kitty bag One day made it very very long ago um, it didn't have the corners boxed right and I uh, had to do a lot of other things to it and I, well, my first sewing project, let's just call it that. In here I have a new project which is the quick switch hat. Looks like this. And it is by Abby Knits. And there it is in the corner. And again, this is Brighten Up Your Day. But this is a, a new base that I'm testing out. Like I said last time, I think. The summer is to test out new bases for the next year. Um, this is a 100% PFL DK. It's a bit fuzzy, but it's super nice and soft. And I didn't expect that from BFL, so I'm definitely impressed. And uh, I would love to know if you really miss a DK or a different sheep in my shop. So drop me a note in the comments. And this is how it looks. It is a folded brim, so you do a provisional cast on. And then you knit stockinette and then you fold it over and knit it together. Hi Bings, yeah, that didn't work. Sorry if that really sounded odd. Um, Bings definitely tried to eat the microphone there. Um, 
it's bright neon. As you can see on the screen, <laughs> um, it is a fun way of knitting. But oh, before I lose my stitches, um, it's also pretty rough on the wrists because they are all twisted stitches. And uh, I was very intrigued by their pattern, so I had to try and look at that pulling in the brim of the hat. I love that. And this is a really fun knit also for uh, very variegated yarns because it really breaks it up. Um, I am knitting this on, I think this is a five and a half millimeter needle. Let me see if I can see it. Yeah, five and a half millimeter or a US nine, I think that is. Yeah, US nine. Um, and these are higher, higher sharps. Interchangeables with the shortest cable, the 40 centimeters. And I really should get me some shorter tips, but I generally dislike those shorter tips, so I'm not very inclined to buy them. But this is kind of like the needles really don't want to work. Um, it's difficult. Let's just keep it at that. Uh, I. I can only knit about around a day, so it's going very slowly. What's a bit less slow is in this Colorful Creativity project bag. Damn, it's been ages since I made bags. I really should do that again. It is my Beachcomber tee by Carly Parent. Um, I test knit it last year and I decided that I love the pattern so much that I cast on a second one. I showed it to you last time I was here, um, so I added one full color. And you knit it top down, so you are seeing somewhere around the waist. But here's how it looks. This is a rainbow tee for me. And yeah, I'm really liking how it looks. I wish it would knit faster. Just. It is knit with Catania, Schachtenmaya Catania cotton in a full rainbow of colors. Um, the next ones will be these four. Ooh, after this, I only have four colors left. Nice. Um, let me see. I think it was about this. This is going to be the next few, probably this way around. Um, here you can see, Schachen Maya Catania. Um, I'm using 10 balls because I have 10 colors, I think. Maybe 11. So they are all from Deep Stash from when I used cotton yarns to crochet blankets. And yeah, I would buy every color uh, that I liked. Uh, I, I had rainbows of colors. I had to buy every color and um, if colors would go out I would buy them all. So yeah I have a huge stash of cotton yarn which is amazing because now I'm knitting cotton tops, multiple cotton tops. So I love that. And again very much more affordable than wool. This is knit on a 3.25 millimeter. Again, higher, higher sharps. <laughs> and this will take me a while, but maybe the hot days I would like probably to handle cotton more than wool. Then, the next project is in this bag. And this is something I have to show you from here because I am knitting the Ardent by Amalia Sieber. It's on the front cover of the newest Pom Pom acquisition. Um, I got a subscription on Pom Pom and uh, I think this was my first or my second edition. Um, where is Ardent? There it is. So you can see the front 
with a big color block and the back with smaller color blocks and a half circle in a different color and I am not very far but hey this is also done with intarsia so you switch colors uh, you just drop it and you go on with the next color um, this doesn't seem like much but actually it's twice as much because it's a folded brim again and, and this is the width of it it is pretty oversized um, I mean uh, this is the hip so but still there's plenty of room there um, which is nice I cast this on for the Pailletten Perlen Plunderfall from Frickelkast the German podcast I love to listen and this yarn yarn has sequins in it I hope you can see that nice and shiny um, the yarn is Bergère de France Estivale there you can see it this is the colorway Anisette this will be for the half uh, circle on the back and the other two colors are mint and pen. pen. I will show you mint and pine oh. and I'm also stabbing my boob with my needle oh god this episode is really a thing mint Um, yeah, it didn't grow much lately because the sequins are a bit rough on the hands. The rest of the yarn contents is, um, let me see, can I find it quickly? Yeah, 50% acrylic, 2% hemp and 29% polyester. So it's a lot of acrylic yarn. Um, but the hemp makes it also pretty rough. Um, it doesn't give me the feel that I'm knitting plastic, but and definitely nothing against acrylic. It's just the hemp and the sequins that are rough on the hands because the sequins have um, sharp edges and the hemp is um, really coarse. It will probably get softer when washing. But yeah. Another summer top. Then, in my huge Paisley Ducky bag with Space Cats, I have picked up something with soft yarn. <laughs> I needed something soft on my hands, and I was like, okay, what do I have that I really would like to knit? Well, my adventuresome wrap. This is a pattern by Amber O'Brien and I really, really love it. I'm not gonna love weaving all the ends, but hey, I love knitting this pattern and by now I can basically do it almost out of the top of my head. Um, let me see, how many do I have? Two, four, six, 10, 12, 14. I'm probably about halfway. Um, I was here at the Christmas marker because this is my Christmas Eve cast on. So um, I basically added six more colors and I'm super happy with how it looks now. I um, am knitting these on, I think it's also a 3.25 or no, a 3.75 mil needle. Higher, higher sharps. And uh, yeah, this yarn is all kinds of leftovers and mini skeins in colorful soft sock or uh, undercover other squirm. I have to say the squirm is not in here yet. I think that's the that might be the next color. My goodness. I'm guessing this episode will be called Catechus Interrupticus or something. Or Cats Are Assholes. My God. They're annoying today. Um, yeah, what I was saying, I'm basically halfway this one 
um, knitting this out of colorful creativity soft sock and undercover other squirm the squirm is coming up soon let me see yeah here is one for long time followers i knit my ripple bralette with this one um, and there are more coming but most of it is colorful soft sock because well i do have plenty mini skeins from Adam calendars and from mini skein sets and from samples and leftovers like this this is a huge leftover but hey uh, also this one is going in and um, this is my main color oh here <laughs> i already put the next color in there so i wouldn't forget that that was next so yeah my main color and my next mini skein we are venturing into warm oranges and yellows we're coming from this we're going to this I have split it up in like sets of five colors in these mini bags and so I wouldn't forget what order I had. Um, I'm really enjoying it and this is basically, I mean I'm going to use all the different colors of course but basically a very good example of what to do with the colorful advent calendar. You just have to add one main color. Um, I'm guessing most people have a skein in their stash that they're like, oh, that could be a main color. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a great idea. So I want to have it finished so I can uh, show it like an example for when it's advent season. <sighs> I'm all in advent calendar mode already, so. What do you mean it's only August? Well, it's a good thing it's only August. I would have rather had that it was still July or something. But hey, I just have to work a little harder. Then I have one more project to show. And it is in this Black Widow bag by Stitching Plaza. And this is just part of the yarn I'm using. Um, I've been wanting to knit myself a Marled Mania sweater for ages, but the pattern is not fully size inclusive. I have contacted Westnitz about that, so Stephen West, and it was like, yeah, we're working on it. And somewhere in February, he said it would be about two months. So in May, I was like, hi, accountability, you said that. How is it going? I know there's a pandemic going. I know it can be later and whatever. Just wanted to see how you're doing. Well, I got a reply saying, if you send me the email address, I have the rough draft ready. I just don't have a layout. Um, so you can see for yourself. So uh, I did, <laughs> I saw for myself and it's coming everyone. It is coming. It's gonna be size inclusive. And I was like, yeah, I have to. Uh, cast it out now because I want to I want to I crave something purple and now I'm seeing a butterfly lay eggs on my cabbage Seriously Nature hates me today. I think whatever um, Yeah, I cast this on this weekend. I have a yoke beginning I am not knitting it as pattern. I am doing an adaptation I saw by someone else, um, actually by Amelia, who also wrote the Ardent pattern, so Kindred Red. She started one repeat lower. Instead of it coming to here, it starts here. More a boat neck style, which I really like. And I hate things going up to my uh, neck. Um, then there's also a different starting point of the sleeve so it doesn't go all the way halfway through the bust but it starts here more a more natural point so that's gonna happen as well and uh, yeah not sure what other modifications will happen but who knows I um, am using soft sock and this is gonna be a 
happy marriage again, or a love child, like I'm calling it, by Undercover Otter and myself. Um, there are loads of Undercover Otter in here. Um, and there's also some Heimat Wolle. This is the Heimat Wolle yarn. And I think the rest is basically my Kits Out Collective colorway. Um, Undercover Otter. This is Undercover Otter. This might be some hand dyed from me. There is um, leftovers from my Find Your Fate shawl mostly. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to mar marling it all together. I have cast on on a four and a half millimeter, and for the main body, I'm going to the five millimeter. Um, it doesn't say that in the pattern, so another modification. But yeah, all in all, I'm looking forward to wearing this crazy neon. And I'm not a pink person, but this has so much orange in it that I'm absolutely in love with it. So, here you go. Um, and I saw a lot of purple uh, projects over at Jelly Knits. And uh, yeah, she's also one of the affordability uh, writers um, or activists. I'm not sure if it's an activist, um, but uh, I saw the purple and was very inspired to finally cast this on because I had the yarn caked and ready for over a year already. Right, my God, I'm not even sure how long we're already in because, well, these are all clips I have to add together with all the interruptions. Oh well. I have one finished spinning object for you. Here it is. I finished uh, plying the Rolex. I, I finished spinning it and then plied it. I plied it on the last day of the tour. And this is a sport-ish weight. I think it was about 180 meters. About-ish. And... Um, It's about 57 grams, so yeah, it's nice. And my husband even said it looks very nice and even, and it's very well balanced. And I still have to wash and set it because, well, I'm lazy. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, right, popping that all in there. Um, I'm looking beside me. Then we're gonna dive into my acquisitions there's a lot um, so let me start with something very exciting um, my dear friend Angela of the Yarn and Yarns Yarn Shop in Pernar and the Yarn and Yarns podcast um, you know she is closing her shop I already told you um, um, before that a few months ago already um, in lockdown still I was like I want to order some yarn from you I hear something but I don't see something okay yeah now I see it what is happening the yarn is falling out of the cart uh, I thought there was a cat somewhere um, I was like yeah I really would like to support you I would like to order a sweater quantity and um, I have seen this yarn, I think, uh, yeah, back in October, I think I even showed it to you. It was so soft. Um, this is Queensland Llama Lace, and this is pure, extra fine baby llama. In the colorway Mahogany, or color 17, and this is so freaking soft. Seriously. Um, this is also probably going to be really, really warm. And, um, well, I ordered five skeins and my dear friend Angela was super kind and gifted me another one in the colorway Caribbean Sea. Because she thought, well, you might have some left over and then you can make something with two colors. 
because they match together so well. And she's totally right. And I might even consider some color work, but I think I would like a uh, one colored sweater of this. Maybe just a simple v-neck raglan sweater or something. Not too difficult, just super easy. So you can just make a nice comfy simple sweater to throw on. So that is a sweater lot. Again, like I said, I pick my sweater lots now and I save for them. So that is how I do it. Um, and I plan. And sometimes I'm lucky. I have also won a few prizes. Um, I am in a Ravelry thread, the Lazy Stupid Godless monthly thread. And um, we play for finished objects and you can win prizes. And I won this gorgeous yarn. This is ancient yarns. And this is reinvent in the colorway cinnamon toast. And where I expected it to, to be actually quite soft, it wasn't. Um, the content of the yarn is very, very interesting. It's 49% wool, 34% mohair, they're not soft, 11% nylon, 4% acrylic, and 2% silk, which is like a super unique combination. And I really like the colors but it might not be next to skin soft for me. It might be that it is when I uh, wash it, but I'm not sure. Um, two skeins, 400 meters per skein. I might be able to squeeze out some crop top. Maybe I can make a Mount Pleasant from it. I think that color would be really nice. But again, I'm not sure if it's next skin soft for me, but I could just try it out or just layer it over a simple tank top or something. And then we also have an embroidery along going. And um, just by showing that you're working on your embroidery, you can already win prizes. Um, you don't have to finish because embroidery takes ages. So if I have to finish that, I have it here. If I have to finish this, I think I will be old and gray. I might actually finish it when I work on it, but at the moment, I don't really have embroidery in mood. But I won this huge ass floss package. It is 240 pieces of embroidery floss in all the colors of the rainbow. Isn't that amazing? This package took about three months to arrive, so it was highly anticipated in the yarn as well. So that's how I know that yarn and stuff from the US take ages at the moment. Um, so yeah, these are <laughs> two of a few packages coming from the US that took their time um, because this is the next package that took its time. I will take it out because it's so pretty. This is Havreland yarn. And the colorway is a long one. Southern Maryland sweater weather. And this is on her yak base. And I got that yak base as well. I'm planning to dye it for autumn the end of the year. Um, this is Superwash Merino with Yuck and Nylon. I love how that's so heathery and a bit more moody and how it darkens the color. Um, this is gonna be the arms of a sock arms sweater. So I just bought these two for the arms. I probably need one and a little bit and the rest is going to be a pair of socks probably 
And then I'm going to dye the body myself. Um, because, well, yuck. Sock yarn is not the cheapest base there is. And I want to match it probably with the red in there. I really like that red. And I want a red sweater with these arms. I think that would be awesome. Then... I bought some DK yarn and that is new to me because I always buy fingering because I always feel that's most value for money. More meters, more things I can do with it. I can hold it double if I want to. But I fell in love with this set of Spectrum Fiber. Look at that. Um, this is Neon Peaches. Summer Bloom and Ocean. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love Spectrum Fiber yarns and I really, really love. Look at the details. I'm not sure you can see that even, but there are little diamonds in silver on the paper. Which is really cute. Really nice uh, branding. And um, I'm hoping to make myself a My Boy Lollipop sweater with this. I think that would be so cool. I'm not sure which way around. I think this way. This up and then just to, to the bottom. So yeah. Making myself all the sweaters at the moment. Oh wait, one bag empty. The second one isn't. And the bag itself, I have to show it to you, because I bought myself a pink hazel add-in bag. Um, to be honest, I bought this when I had my surgery. Um, I thought I deserved a nice treat. And I saw this fabric and I had been missing out so many other gorgeous add-in bags already. I was like, I want this one. And I got this one. So now I'm just contemplating getting a long crossbody strap. Um, yeah, I just would like to know from people who already have that, if the crossbody strap is long enough for big people. Because my crossbody strap on my pleistre bag wasn't big enough. Um, so yeah, very curious if that one will be long enough. And I won't be buying one if it isn't, of course. Then there is more embroidery floss. This is the DMC Moulinet Special, um, a limited edition in the Palm box. I will open it. There is a leaflet in here uh, with the patterns to these cute little embroideries. Then there is a bit of foam. And that bit of foam is making sure that this is staying in a gorgeous rainbow of summery colors. I really, really love it. And there's three different uh, ones with sparkle in there as well. The DMC Moulinet Etoile. So, 20 skeins, four free charts, like it says on the front. But wait, there is more. Um, I have this eye searingly gorgeous skein of yarn. This is from Crealine Design and this is Rainbow Fever, a self-striping 15 color sock yarn. Um, the base is called Smooth Sock. Well, it's the same base as my Smooth Sock. I guess I'm not the only one calling it a Smooth Sock yarn. <laughs> um, yeah, it's neon, it's rainbow. Like I said, when I got my surgery, I was like, first 
when my surgery wasn't gonna happen, I was like, meh, I can order myself some stuff because I am uh, in need of some comfort. And then when I had the, oh, surprise, you're gonna have your surgery. I was like, oh my freaking God, I need to order some stuff because I have to keep calm and treat myself to fun stuff. That's why I, do. I stress why. I know. I'm not the only one. I won't be shamed for it. I try and do, do better now, but nope. Then, since it's August, I have three different clan of egars to show you. We will start with May. May was Jaws month. There you go, clan of egars. Jaws. The cats are having a fight. And here it is. Your certifiable quint. I am assuming here that I didn't have to say spoilers because this is me. This is three months ago. Um, the extra that was in there was this cute little shark pin with a bikini. Seriously. Too cute. Then, I dropped the paper. Um, June was the fly. And the fly was the colorway brundle fly. There you go. It is a moody grayish with green and neon green. Chartreuse and well, and there was a <coughs> rainbow gel pen. Yes, they are play fighting, but it's loud and noisy. Um, even though this doesn't match um, the movie, like Petra says, she would have uh, she tried to find Jeff Goldblum body pillows, but that went a bit over budget, so have a pen instead. It's got rainbows. I'm okay with it. And it was, of course, Pride Month, I think. June, yes, Pride Month. Then, okay, spoilers, if you haven't had the July colorway yet, look away. The colorway is from the movie Pet Cemetery, um, And I read this thing all the way and it made me want to watch the movie, but I chatted about it with Petra and she said, don't. Definitely don't. She doesn't even recommend the uh, about the movie movie for me, because, well, I'm that bad with horror movies. So here it is, without further ado, sometimes dead is better. And this is half a skein of blue and half a skein of uh, green, which will make it a micro striper, probably. Are you okay, Banks? Thank you. And it has a very cute little cat stitch marker. Yeah. He's gonna throw a fit now because he lost and a sissy one. Seriously, he really handles not being able to win hard. What you hear now is Leia. <sighs> like I said, my cats are assholes. Nou is het klaar. Nee, nou is het klaar. Nee. Je gaat maar een brokje eten. Seriously. 
Right, then I have some shop news. And like I said before, Brighten Up Your Day is fully available again. And there is a new colorway. Finally, I, are, I think I already showed it to you before I went on my uh, surgery hiatus. I was dying the nerd in the attic or nerd in the attic or Nita. Um, I know I said Tanita before, but I thought, why would I add the if it's already nice Nita? So here we have Nita. Nita is now available on soft sock. I have dyed nine skeins of this. Um, I will be dying more of it, but that will be after Advent Calendar. Because 1,000 mini skeins is a freaking lot to do all by yourself. I now know why I did it with Petra. And we had a wonderful thing together. But hey, <laughs> I can do this by myself. I can. Um, so yeah, here is my new favorite colorway. And I really, really want a sweater and a ripple bralette and a ripple but shorts and I want everything in this colorway. So I better get going and knitting. Um, as for personal chatter, I still uh, have to say that we got the biopsies back from Miss Laia. Um, I didn't tell you anything about that the last time because I was like, yeah, not gonna wor worry anyone else besides myself. Um, yeah, it wasn't the best news we had, but the vet also told us that the chances are really small and it's probably going to be scar tissue on her tongue and it won't be cancer. But there were some um, cancer cells or pre-cancer cells in there and they have to say it because if they don't and it turns cancer, we can say, oh, you did it wrong. Yeah, well, all we can do, fingers crossed, that Miss Laia just has scar tissue from last year's caterpillar uh, issues. And that, uh, that's it. So, please send all your love and thoughts to her that she will be with us for a really long time to come. And that we won't have to miss her. Uh, because I can't handle the thought of that yet. She's not even eight. Um, she has a long way to go still, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, I guess my life is very boring at the moment. I'm just dying, 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 dying. All the mini skeins for elephant. And uh, I found my love again for baking. So last weekend, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw banana bread and scones. And I even made a quiche for dinner, so lots of baking. Um, also dinner prep, nicely on time in the morning and potato salad just does taste better when it has a few hours in the fridge, when it can really soak up the flavor. So yeah, um, I went to see my therapist last week for the first time in months. And I guess that was really good for me. Which also means uh, that I think yeah, therapy should be something you talk about and therapy should be normal. Um, but damn, I totally forgot how much better I feel after a session. And uh, I hope that that energy will get me through the next few weeks until I see her again because she's on vacation now. And uh, yeah, I even hope to bake some bread. Something I've been meaning to do since the start of lockdown, but my sourdough starter failed. And um, yeah, I'm not really one for a long kneading and um, proofing bread. So I want to make an Irish soda bread. So if you have any experience in baking something like that or uh, have nice recipes for me to share, then uh, I'm all here. Um, I'm also planning on doing some fat rascals that I saw at Angela's, so definitely looking forward to baking more, um, which is nice. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye to you all.
and see you again next time i hope bye bye i am very curious to see if that really changes the sound it at least has binks distracted because there's a cable moving like this all the time so guess who wants to attack the microphone yes there you are go purr in that microphone now oh good job yes hey do not bite the microphone not sure if this was a really good idea. We might have a blooper section at the end now. Don't. So, let me grab my cart again because I'm moving. Like I said, we've got a blooper section here.